Today we're going to look at my in-ear monitor mix from Uproom's end of year conference 2023. This is the Sunday morning session and it was, it's got to be one of my favorite sets I've played. The worship leaders are incredible, specifically Aaron Tedeschi who's leading the main song we're in for this video is, I love that guy. He leads so well. He's a good friend outside of church and also the band is, is incredible. The reason why I want to make this video is to give you tangible advice and help you learn practical skills on how to play in a prophetic environment in what some might call spontaneous worship. This is something that at my church, we are at Uproom, we do all the time. Um, the prayer sets that are two hours, typically we might play in one song or just the key that we're going to play in. And then on a Sunday, we'll rehearse about three songs, but maybe just do one of them, maybe do none of the songs we rehearsed and really just create in the moment. The biggest pieces of advice that I want you to take away from this video when we get into it are learning how to submit to the worship leader, to what the song needs, and to whoever's music directing and the rest of the musicians. Not overplaying or just playing something for the sake of playing it. And also like that your personal connection to the Lord in your quiet times is paramount to being able to hear him and listening to the spirit in the moment. So Let's get into it. Here is the video. Before we start this, I want to give just a little bit of context. We played one song. We played uh, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus first. I, I didn't get a good capture of the audio from that. I made some tweaks to the mix. And then now we're in Oh the Cross. And this song we flowed out of went into some songs that were already written and then also into some that were not. And here we go. So for the intro, we chose not to do it like the original song, and we wanted it to be like really big and atmospheric and spacey, so you can see that I um, have the tone rolled all the way down on this part, tremolo picking, lots of herb. start to watch this channel more you'll see that this honestly is, is one of my favorite tones to get out of the guitar for a moment like this it, it really is just so nice I, I love the tone roll down I love the way the reverb crunches up yeah and, and in this moment we weren't planning on playing the intro so many times but it just ended up being what happened because we needed to give the intro some more time um, yeah oh here's something that's so good so the, the worship leader was talking to the MD before the set, and the MD said he was feeling Isaiah 53. Um, because the worship starts even before the set for this, but he was feeling Isaiah 53. Specifically, um, we all like sheep have uh, wandered astray. And he's sharing that, and then the worship leader at the beginning is singing out of that. So it really is like mutual submission. It's not just the worship leaders that are leading your input, your feedback goes a long way, not just instrumentationally, spiritually as well. Yeah, so we can see here the worship leader started, he wanted, thought he wanted to start with the verse and then kind of like dropped out, so we just loop the intro some more times. I added a gain stage just to separate this a little bit because we've been on it for a while, but don't want to add too much yet. So I'm following the melody a little bit here to change it up from the intro just a tad, but we'll go back into the intro in a second. So there's just melody right there. It's like, I forget exactly how it goes, but the worship leader was singing it in some of the 
like flowy sections. He was just singing out the melody. So I, I'm trying to match it on guitar, not exactly, but to support what he's doing, make him feel like we're unified as a band. <laughs> see you can tell the worship leader is giving cues because he's saying the first words of the verse a little bit so very very important to have the worship leader turn up in your ears enough to hear it and the music director too there again Aaron giving direction telling us where to go is it singing again you carried so now we're in the pre-chorus it's Aaron singing that melody Okay, so there, Justice, the MD, calls Just Play the Pads. So what I want to do is I don't want to just drop completely out. I really want to add some space and have my trails take us there. I think this is important to connect the sections together. Also, adds a little bit of texture and is fun. So we're about to go back into another intro. Felt like we needed to go big here, so I'm changing it up, and I'm or I'm gonna pause it. So I'm actually playing a different line than normally is in the intro or the interlude to the song. Um, normally it's like a one and a three picking pattern. The rhythm guitar actually takes it, but with the atmosphere that we're in, it doesn't feel like it fits. So this is a lot of playing prophetically. Is like even if a part is pre-written and you know it, you need to learn all the parts before you come in. But it's sensing in the moment would that be the best thing for the song or would playing something else actually be better? So in this case, I want to follow the vocal melody a little bit. I want to support Aaron and you'll see we actually end up playing kind of the same. He sings something that I play at the same time, which is really cool. It's just again, showing that we are unified. Unity of the spirit is like the most important thing when we're playing. One, two, three, four, five. I was right there, that part was fun. We played the same thing as Aaron sang. Right there, again, Aaron's calling out. He said the sacrifice. That's the first lyrics to verse two, so we know we're gonna go into the verse here. Admittedly, I might be using a little bit too much reverb, but I wanted to keep it consistent with what we were doing in the intro. Super spacey, super atmospheric. I think it works. In the in your monitors, you're going to hear that way more apparently than it is going to be in the mix. So you want to make sure you're not too washy. I, I have the pre-delay turned up a pretty good amount on the reverb for this sound just because it is so washy. A little out of tune there. Yeah, so just as the MD could tell, Aaron was gaining a little bit of momentum. So he tells the band, come up, and we really like do. I think we end up repeating the verse and then we tag the pre chorus quite a few times. So thought process going into this next section is okay we're building energy we're building momentum i don't want to overplay because i want to save something for later but i do want to build the intensity every single pass every single chord progression so you'll see that Yeah, 
Ben's repeating the pre-chorus here, so really just gotta follow him. right there at the end of that line i'm wanting to play something to separate the pre-chorus and the chorus a little bit so i'm switching it up i think it worked it might not have been the best choice but definitely worked there and then in the chorus there's typically a part that we play that's a little bit faster and a little bit more dissonant but again i i feel like we're big in atmospheric here so i don't want to play that necessarily so i'm coming up with a new line in the moment that matches the vocal melody well it engages with the other rhythms the instruments are playing the rhythms the other instruments are playing and yeah it works and i believe later on i'll go back into the line we normally play on guitar during the course here but this is an example like you're always listening to the spirit sensing the room feeling what the song needs the most and if it's not the pre-recorded part then it's okay to play something else <laughs> in that fill <laughs> not necessary but kind of fun for a live set okay so I, it's good to know we're gonna go into the bridge after this and justice ends up calling a down bridge and yeah, i'm gonna go and pause it actually he, he calls a down bridge for the interlude and this is why it's important to know your worship leaders because i know aaron who's singing this song likes weird stuff he likes weird guitar he likes unique sounds he likes it when people take risks and really play things that are truly creative so i went for a line that i probably wouldn't have if it was a, another worship leader that was a little that either liked things to go pretty straightforward or let's say there's someone that likes really just acoustic and piano like i would be playing the guitar clean swelling a lot more maybe even some more chords and just triads but the worship leader's preferences and what I like to play are dictating a lot of what's happening here. So this line that I go for, it's not like fast, but it's faster than might typically play. I have the tone all the way rolled off, so it blends together and meshes a little bit more. But yeah, that's, I think it worked pretty well here. It's always important to take risks, even if they don't. So, and we were only planning on doing one pass through this uh, instrumental before the bridge, but felt like there needed to be more. So we all do, we add some texture. I think I'm about to kick on an octave to give it more, that like swells up a little bit. So here, Aaron is starting to um, connect his personal life to the song and what we're singing. When he does that, he always goes up. So the MD is aware of that. I'm aware of that. We're going to play something a little bit different here. Um, just give it a little more movement. And yeah, when your worship leaders do something like this, it's really important to support them. That's one of the biggest parts of playing prophetically is mutual submission to the other band members and to the worship leader. And so right there, Justice says, so good, Cole. It's always good to be encouraged in the parts, especially if you're, this felt like a little bit of a risk to play. So if you're an MD 
and you like something somebody's doing, feel free to tell them in the mic. It'll encourage them, make them play more confidently, and I think the band will all gel around it together. What's the progression? Yeah, so right there, I just without anyone calling it, we could all feel that we were going into the bridge. Um, so wanting to play something that matches the bridge a little bit better than that. I'll bring that line in later because it really works over these chords, but more so following the bridge melody here. So I've got a lot of gain here. It's pretty fuzzy. And again, if I know Aaron likes this stuff, so I'll go for it. But another worship leader probably wouldn't run this much gain. Yeah. So, so just as calling cymbals, uh, I know we're going to drive. And like that's what David's going to do. David's the drummer. He's really killing at this set. So I'm going to try to match that, and then later on I will bring in something to change it up a little bit when the drummer kind of moves on from this. So I really like this part. It follows the vocal melody pretty well. It's outlining the chords. Um, yeah. Yeah, so here, just really playing like what I was before, it works well. Just anticipating where we're gonna go is huge. And the drummer changing it up means we're probably headed to a different section. Hold the four, bridge, hold the four, hold the four! Good job, bro. Awesome, Justice did a great job, great job there. He, the drummer starts building it up, he hears a vocal cue from Aaron, he calls us to the bridge, hold the four, because that's what we have to do to connect the sections. And yeah, the intensity's up, so I don't know what I'm gonna play here, but I bet it's a little bit more than what I was playing. Okay, yeah, so I go back into that part that felt like a risk earlier that really worked. So going to play that here with all of the gain, tone open, and yeah, it's, hey, this is a fun set. Let's do the three. Okay, now just trying to follow the melody, trying to follow the chords, and do the best I can to be interesting at the same time, but not stand out too much. <laughs> oh, that note haunted me. That was that was very out of the key. So I, when we're playing like this, nobody's perfect. If you're not playing exactly pre-recorded parts, you're probably gonna mess up at some point, and that's okay. I think. Make sure you know the song, make sure you know the scales, and, and take risks. If it's happening all the time, maybe scale it down a little bit. You're probably overplaying, but one missed note, not the end of the world. If it was a recording, we could overdub that. Okay, so I love this. We, we didn't plan to switch up the groove. I just... I was feeling a change. Honestly, like this may sound swirly or something, but I was like sensing a change of rhythm in the spirit and I guess David the drummer was too because we're locked in his kicks are the same rhythm as the melody that I'm playing here and it's just I, I love to see it when this happens it's so good
Okay, yeah, so here's the typical chorus part that we play during this song, and I figured I was going to play it in the moment, but I was like, oh, let me wait and see if the drums or somebody else does something. So David, the drummer, is really like building a lot here, and I felt like the guitar part needed more than what I was playing, so that's why I went into this pretty intense part that we normally do. Gosh, it's so good what David's playing on the drums here. Oh man, this is when I knew, okay, we're, this is going to be a good set, we're going to go in some fun places, because Aaron is just unhindered, singing straight to the Lord, and really getting into it, so always make sure you're not only listening to and trying to submit to the worship leaders, but you're watching them. Body language is huge. Sometimes they may give like a symbol for like a chorus or a bridge, but honestly, more than more often than not, it's the body language and vocal cues. That was cool too. The drummer went slightly halftime at the same time I did without talking about it. It's, we're in sync. Okay, so if I remember correctly here, um, and I haven't watched this video back, so it's been a, about a couple of months since the set, it feels like we're about to go down. And when that happens, like, you want to make sure you're ready to drop. So we'll see if, like, you know, that my intuition is right there. But we've been up for a while, and it kind of feels like, you know, we've been on the same bridge and chorus for a long time. And typically, it's easier to reset or go somewhere else when we're down, if it's a song like this in 6-8. One more chorus! Hold up! Yeah, so that was right. We call just keys and we go into this. It helps break it up a little bit. Like, sometimes it can get tiring just in the room if the band is up the whole time. So, I, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, also here, there's like a. Aaron starts singing out more of that Isaiah 53 about following the Lord and him being the only one that stayed the course. And so I, I try to go into a part the next time I bring it down that sounds like following. It sounds like footsteps on the guitar, like the Lord's footsteps that are just, and that's, you're, you're, I'm going to pull so I'm going to turn you down. That really is something that I, I think is huge. If you're feeling something specific, that's like a picture or it's a way to describe it, just try to play it on your instrument and maybe like, okay, how do I play footsteps? An idea will probably come to your mind if you're thinking that and just go for it. It's, it's better to try and have it miss than to not try and play timidly and never have ideas. You can just turn yourself up. Yeah, so here again, just trying to play something interesting that doesn't stick out too much that supports the vocal melody and matches the rhythm that the other instruments are playing. Yeah, so this part right here coming up is the following the footsteps thing. So, um, if 
this sounds like footsteps is what I meant. Sorry, this was too loud. Avix is going into Great Are You Lord. Wasn't planned. Such a good call. Like I, I honestly think that this is the perfect response to saying thank you the whole time. It's like, okay, what are we grateful for? His goodness. He is so good. He's great. So that is awesome. Really proud of her for going into this. And I'm actually tuning my guitar. We I looked at the other guitarist and we switched between rhythm and lead, which is something good to do if both your guitar players are good. Um, yeah, don't just hog all the lead parts. So, but I'm tuning, we're in the key of D, so I'm tuning to open D, uh, just to, I felt like it would give a fullness for rhythm, and yeah, let me know if you think it did or not. Let's do the three. Four. One. Again, it's fun. I love it when I unintentionally match what the drummer does because we're feeling the same things that are in sync. Six. You can tell I forgot I was in drop D there. <laughs> or not drop D, open D. Let me kind of fast forward through some different parts here at the end. Um, this Aaron. Yeah, let's and then wrap the it all up. Let's go to the forever. And let's drive it. Yeah, so this is awesome. Um, after singing that, you know, great are you, Lord. We're talking about hallelujah to the lamb. We end up going to this at the center of the throne. There is a lamb. This is a part of the reason why it's important, <laughs> I said earlier, your personal time with the Lord and to read the Bible, because if you don't know where things are in scripture, it's hard to like paint the picture with your instrument of like what's going on. So I know Revelation 4, Revelation 5, it the angel is telling John, who's up in heaven, like, look, or it's one of the elders. He says, look, there is like a lamb and, or a lion. And John turns around and he says, no, that's a lamb that's been slain. And then it comes up to the center of the throne. And that lamb is Jesus. And he's also at the right hand of the throne. So just, it's fun to know the context to what you're singing. And it really helps in the spirit to be in tune with it. And there's no way to know that unless you're stewarding your personal relationship with the Lord, reading scripture, spending time waiting on his voice. And even that, like hearing his voice and being led by his spirit in your daily life will like, like there's no way to expect to be able to come up on a stage and hear where the spirit wants to go and be in tune with him. If like you aren't off of the stage. So that's why it's so important. Why it's so important for musicians specifically to do this. It's important for a lot of other reasons, but So right here, uh, Justice, our MD, called like choke it. And I wasn't sure exactly what he meant. So I, I like drop. And then when I realized the drummer's still going, I'm going to match him with the guitar. I think it works well. Good. 
Just voices, just voices, just voices. This was fun. I tried to add some textures with like pick slides. I think it works in this weird area that we're at that's super biblical and awesome. So good with justice is playing. Yeah, especially while playing rhythm, it, it's good to just give big open strums sometimes. Let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about? So guys, I hope that this was helpful. I just try to sum up the tips that I've been saying throughout this video. One Spend time in the secret place and actively seek the voice of the Father and know how to listen to the Holy Spirit because playing prophetically and spontaneously, it's just hearing what is happening in the Spirit and communicating that. So that's tip number one. <laughs> Develop your personal life in the secret place. Um, the second tip is just know your worship leaders. Like know what they like, know what they dislike. If you're playing with someone for the first time, like, it might be guessing and leaning on the spirit to tell you what to do, but supporting them as best you can is key. So if you know them well and know their preferences, you will be able to support them better. Also, it's not about you. <laughs> as funny as that is to say, I know electric guitarists can have an ego and want to show off and play and stuff, but it really is like it's about the band in the moment and ultimately the Lord and we're pointing people to him. So it's not about you. Fill space as best as you can and do the best you can for the band and support the worship leaders as good as you can. A part of that is listening to your MD. If you have an MD that's confident and calling stuff out, just go for it and at least try it. And if it doesn't work, you can go back to what you were doing. But yeah, that's the biggest, biggest things. Your own secret place, knowing the role that you're trying to play, knowing the worship leaders and the MD and just really trying to support all the while being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I hope this helped. If you guys have questions, drop them in the comments. If you stayed this long to the end of the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, please subscribe. It'll help the channel, help this reach more people. Throw this video a like if you found it helpful. And yeah, I will see you guys next week.